seven three. Okay, so now we've got the white flags to start with, and white is just arbitrary, or is yeah, there a convention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have three different colors of flags when I'm done. Okay, so now I'm just gonna find about twenty feet. Obviously, when you're working with a tractor, you don't have to be that active. So I gotta get one more in. But I don't know if I set up wrong. You go on the other side of the fence. Yeah, I'm stuck in the damn tree. I usually would set it up over there. All right, but shoot down, mm -hmm. shoot down the blue flag. Yep. Supposing I had a flag up here like that. Supposing the fourth flag was here, I'd have an anomaly there. Mm -hmm. I, I can't get that with a tractor. I can get it with a shovel, mm -hmm. as you'll see over there when you go look at what I've done. Mm -hmm. But normally then this would just be moved up so that have a fairly straight line. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Alright, you're gonna correct every fifty to a hundred feet. You're not gonna get little tiny curves in there. You're going to smooth out your contours so that they can go off pretty much like that. Especially on 30 acres. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So now you can see that I can continue this process all the way I can go 800 to 1,000 feet over there mm -hmm. following these contours. It's quick. It's very quick. doesn't take very long, um, depending on your slope. And <coughs> this slope here is uh, probably 100 feet, and we've dropped 2 feet. That's a 2% slope. I'll get no, almost no erosion off of that. So that's, it's a first-class kind of contour first class kind of terrace and you'll want to keep yours under three percent so you're gonna you're gonna shoot every two feet down your hill and then you're gonna look at how much distance you have and the slope and when your slopes are too fast then you're gonna have to shorten them up shorten up your terraces right so that the max distance between terraces is what well you, you're, you may have to violate that on some terraces because you have to stop erosion with these contours. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is you change the slope from being 6% to 3% on a terrace. And then the terrace drops and it's only 3%. 3% is uh, when you have water shedding across something faster than 3% slope, that's when erosion starts. And you have 6% to 7% on most of your slopes. And that's why you have erosion. Mm -hmm. Flat out. This road goes across the contour and is uniformly uh, 2%. Mm -hmm. This road does not exceed 2%, except one place where God decided that he didn't have to follow the rules, <laughs> and it's 3%, and it's the release point for all the water that catches on the road, and that's where I have to do all the maintenance and erosion, because I, I, I'm God. I should be able to violate the rules, right? Well, I got punished for it. <laughs> But it's a great teaching point because I've got a 2% slope, this road, very easy to put in. Once you lay your contours out and I've got two foot of drop between my contours, you know that I'm going to go 100 foot between contours and then my road's going to zigzag and you can see all the corners. Mm -hmm. And they follow the rules except for down there. Mm -hmm. And then I have erosion down there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So as soon as it jumped to 3%, I start paying for it. Mm -hmm. But that's simply how it's done. How did I know where to put the road? That's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So we haven't done any zoning yet. We're going to now look at how to grid this. Okay. You have to be able to grid this. Mm 